Dear students, I am Dr. Muhammad Abdul Sami Siddiqui from Department of English, Maulana Azad National Urdu University, Hyderabad. I welcome you all to this class of MA English. Today, we shall talk about the drama A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen, which is prescribed in the first year syllabus. Friends, let me first introduce the dramatist, Henrik Ibsen. Ibsen is a major playwright of the 19th century. He belonged to Norway. He is often known as the pioneer of realism in modern theatre. His plays challenge the 19th century values and morality. This makes many of his plays controversial. An enemy of the people, a doll's house, ghosts, when we dead awaken are some of his major works. Ibsen influenced many a later playwrights including G.B. Shaw and Eugene O'Neill. We shall now move on to the play. A Doll's House. It is a realistic drama. It highlights the cultural conflicts of the 19th century. It has a shocking and controversial conclusion. It is often remembered while discussing the role of theatre in a society. The play is also monumental for its individual characters and for providing a vision of the new society. Let's consider the characters in A Doll's House. This play has a limited number of characters. Among the major characters, we have Torvald Helmer, who is a lawyer, his wife, Nora Helmer, his friend, Dr. Rank, Nora's childhood friend, Mrs. Lind, and a bank clerk, Nils Krogstad. Apart from these major characters, we have minor characters as well. Among the minor characters, we have Helmer's three children, a nurse, a maid, and a delivery boy. The play is divided into three acts. The act one introduces major characters and conflict of the play. The play begins on a happy note. Nora has returned from shopping for the Christmas. She is humming. Her husband calls her his little lark, squirrel and also a spendthrift. In the first act itself, we can sense Nora's position as a doll in the house. Here, you may notice that Nora appears to be a carefree person and her husband uses soft words for her, but is quite authoritative and dominating. He expects her to fulfill her duties as a wife and as a mother under strict guidelines of morality and social conditioning. Nora is happy that her husband has become a bank manager. She thinks that they can afford to spend a little more this Christmas, but her husband cautions her. Please note that spending and money have a special significance in the play. When Torvald asks Nora what she wants for Christmas, she replies, money. Meanwhile, Dr. Rank and Mrs. Lynn visit the Helmers. Dr. Rank joins Torvald and Mrs. Lynn joins Nora. The two women share their secrets. Nora reveals that she has hidden more than macaroons from her husband. Friends, macaroons is a kind of sweet. 
Nora is fond of it. Torvald has forbidden it on health grounds. So she hides it from him. Thus hiding is an important motive of the play. It also informs us about Torvald's complete control over Nora and also of the childlike behavior of Nora. Nora also shares a bigger secret with Mrs. Lind. The secret is that just after their marriage, Torvald was seriously ill. The doctors had suggested to take him to a warm country. Nora had to finance this trip on her own. She borrowed the money from Nils Krogstad. She had to forge her father's signature and tell Torvald that the money had come from her father. This secret is actually Nora's pride. She has sacrificed a lot to repay the loan from her savings. Torvald is not aware of Nora's hardships in repaying the loan. On the other hand, he feels that she is a spendthrift. Secondly, Nora's secret, which is her pride in the beginning, later on becomes the reason for her disgrace. During the discussion between Nora and Mrs. Lynn, we come to know that Mrs. Lynn is more practical than Nora. Her opinions about things show that she has a realistic view of life which Nora lacks. The arrival of Krogstad disturbs Nora. Though when he comes for the first time, he does not talk to her much. He says that he has come to meet Torvald purely for the business purpose. Nora's anxiety on seeing Krogstad reveals her apprehension of her secret regarding the money being disclosed to her husband. After Krogstad leaves, Nora asks Torvald to give Mrs. Lynn a position in the bank and Torvald agrees to it. After a short discussion, Torvald, Dr. Rank and Mrs. Lind leave. The three children arrive and Nora plays hide and seek with them. The game also reminds us of the motive of hiding. Krogstad reappears and asks Nora for a favor. He tells her that her husband is going to remove him from his position at the bank. So she should stop her husband from doing so. Otherwise, he will reveal Nora's forgery to Torvald. When Torvald returns, Nora talks to him about Krogstad. Torvald is reluctant to keep Krogstad's position at the bank. He also says that if a parent commits a crime, it affects the children as well. He speaks of the crime as an infectious thing. This comparison increases Nora's anxiety and she decides to stay away from the children. As a mother, it is a difficult decision for her, but she takes it to save the children from the effects of the crime that she has committed. The act second begins on the Christmas day. Nora is anxious about her secret being revealed to her husband and the after effects of it. She discusses with the nurse about the children who grow up without mothers. She also expresses her wish to remain away from her children. Mrs. Lynn arrives and Nora tells her that she can be saved only if a miracle happens. This waiting for a miracle is another important motive of the play. During her hardships, Nora would expect that some dying rich man would leave all his property for Nora. This never happens. 
but it is a sort of fantasy which informs us of Nora's unrealistic and romantic approach of life. Dr. Rank arrives and reveals his love for Nora. Nora is angry at Dr. Rank that by revealing his love, he has spoiled the fun. She is also troubled that now she cannot ask him for the financial help. Nora speaks to Torvald about keeping Krogstad at the bank. He is not ready to do it. He does not want to be blamed that he has accepted his wife's influence. Another reason is that Krogstad and Torvald were classmates. So there is a possibility that Krogstad would dominate him in the bank. Nora says that these are petty reasons. Torvald is angry at this and immediately sends Krogstad's termination letter. Krogstad visits Nora and threatens her again. He leaves a letter for Torvald revealing all about Nora's forgery. Nora's anxiety is at its highest. She stops Torvald from reading the letter by involving him in practicing the dance. Ibsen presents the situation in such a way that the audience can expect that the disaster has arrived closer to Nora and all her attempts to avoid it are going to be futile. The last act, which is the third act of the play, opens with Mrs. Lind and Krogstad. We come to know that they were previously in a relationship. Mrs. Lind suggests Krogstad that the two can join each other again. She also convinces him to take his claim back. He agrees to both the things. Again, we are reminded of Mrs. Lynn being a more practical woman than Nora. She could resolve the matter, which was a great worry for Nora. Meanwhile, Dr. Rank arrives and leaves Helmers informing them about his anticipated death. Torvald tells Nora that he has often thought that some danger would befall Nora and he, like a man, would rescue her. This sort of a wish reveals his patriarchal mindset. Nora thinks that this is a right time to ask Torvald to read Krogstad's letter. Torvald reads the letter and loses his temper. The romantic mood and the desire to rescue Nora go away. Instead, he blames her that she has deceived him and ruined his reputation. He asks Nora to stay in the house but not to be with the children because she has committed a crime. He claims that from now happiness doesn't matter. All that matter is appearance. After some time, another letter from Krogstad arrives which makes Torvald happy as Krogstad has withdrawn his claims. But by this time, Nora has completely changed. She has realized that both her father and her husband have treated her like a doll. She sits down for the first serious conversation with her husband. She has not done such a conversation in the last eight years of her married life. She informs him of her decision to leave the house and make a life for herself. 
Torvald reminds her that her most sacred duties are towards her husband and children. To which she replies that she has even more sacred duties towards herself. Nora leaves the house saying that unless the miracle of miracles happens, nothing can change her mind. The drama ends with the slamming of a door which is symbolically a slap on the face of Torvald and patriarchy. The drama questions the very definition of freedom and responsibility. Ibsen points out if social responsibility is more important than individual rights. As a problem play, it highlights the social expectations. Ibsen tries to say that social expectations hinder individual freedom and growth. The drama is filled with irony, especially the last act. We find the shifts in Torvald's behavior. The play is surely about asserting the self and seems to have a feminist perspective. It debates the gender roles and marriage as an institution. It seeks to search the identity of Nora, not inside the house, but outside the house. Because inside the house, she is just a doll. Ibsen, in his notes to the play, says that there are two kinds of moral laws, two kinds of consciences, one for men and one quite different for women. They don't understand each other, but in practical life, a woman is judged by masculine law as though she weren't a woman but a man. The wife in the play, that is Nora, ends by having no idea of what is right and what is wrong. Natural feelings on one hand and belief in the authority on the other lead her to utter distraction. A woman cannot be herself in modern society. It is an exclusively male society with laws made by men, with prosecutors and judges who assess female conduct from a male standpoint. Nora has committed forgery, which is her pride, for she has done it out of love for her husband to save his life. But this husband of hers takes his standpoint, which is a male standpoint, conventionally honorable, on the side of the law and sees the situation with male eyes. Weighed down and confused by her trust in authority, Nora loses faith in her own morality and in her fitness to bring up her children. A mother in modern society, like certain insects, retires and dies once she has done her duty by propagating the race. Dear students, in today's class, we have talked about Henrik Ibsen's play, A Doll's House. I hope this discussion will surely help you in understanding the play. I suggest you to read the text of the play and attempt an analysis of the major characters and themes of the play. Please also consider the recurring motives and the symbols used in the play. An understanding of the 19th century social conventions will also be helpful. You can also watch the film adaptation of the play on YouTube. Let's meet some other time with some other 
important and interesting topic from your syllabus. Till then, goodbye.